there by Boca Negra, and he runs it up to about the 14-yard line. But a flag comes down here right at the end of the play. So uh, Wolverines deep in their own end right now here just five seconds into the game. We were talking about the turf, Mario, and uh, this uh, new turf they put in is uh, was the state-of-the-art turf in 2007 when the school district replaced the old grass field and put this in and uh, we were told by the manufacturer that it could withstand up to a 10 inch deluge and so that's the only reason why the field is probably playable tonight and you're absolutely right mark that's what's important not only a good turf the fact that the drainage system is very effective about five minutes ago it looked like it hadn't even rained here and then all of a sudden here comes the rain so it'll be interesting to see if they have any drainage problems, I doubt it. It's a real good turf, and we're ready to go. Yeah, here we go. And in the gun is uh, number one, John Anthony Signs, the starter at quarterback. Now, Michael Gonzalez is their regular quarterback, so but they do like to put more people in there. Or actually, that is Gonzalez at quarterback. It's number seven, but they hand it off in the first play and have a modest gain there up across the 10, up to about the 14-yard line, a pickup of seven. And Michael Gonzalez, quarterback for the Wolverines, is quite a good athlete, just a junior, but he was a starter last year in baseball, basketball, and football as a sophomore. Oh, great athlete. He's in the pistol right here. they got the running back Jonathan Trevino in the backfield with him, and he gets the carry this time and has a first down up across the 20, up to about the 22-yard line. Let's take a look at the offensive starters now for PSJA Memorial. And you can see there, led by the quarterback, Michael Gonzalez, just a junior, but does have a lot of experience. And uh, actually, uh, five seniors and six juniors here in this starting lineup. And you can see they uh, have a lot of uh, talented wide receivers there. Uh, other wide receivers like Marco Pettis will also be coming in off the bench. Eric Medellin will be coming in off the bench. So a very talented team they have. But we'll have to see how much the weather is a factor and how that affects their passing game and their play calling. First and 10 for Far Memorial. And Gonzalez is going to keep it this time. And gets hit in the backfield and goes down for uh, a loss of a couple of yards. Brought down by the uh, defensive the defender end. players there, the defensive end for the Warriors. There you can see the defense for the Nicky Rowe Warriors. They go with a four down linemen and three linebackers. And then the defensive backs, a uh, pretty experienced group there with a couple of seniors back there. They do have one sophomore in their starting lineup. The rest juniors and seniors. On the last play, let's give credit to Jorge Guerra for the tech. And Michael Gonzalez is just a junior. I don't know, Mark, if you remember a couple of years ago, the Wolverines had a star quarterback named Louis Gonzalez, and this is a younger brother, Michael Gonzalez. Oh, the Gonzalez brothers. He went a lot there for PSJA Memorial. And here's a handoff to uh, Trevino on first and five, following a penalty against Nicky Rowe. This goes up to the 28-yard line. And actually, it was first and 10, let me correct that, and they get up to the 28, so it'll be second down and about four. So far, the Wolverines doing a good job of handling the pickskin. No problems. They're going with a safe play, running attack. That's the best way to keep the ball in your hands. Don't put it in the air. So far, we haven't seen a pass yet, but uh, PSJ Memorial going out of the gun. Handed off to Trevino, sweep to the right side, gets around the 30, up to about the 34, has the first down before he's brought down by the linebacker, Josh Holly, a junior there for Nicky Rowe. And the offensive coordinator for the Wolverines is Luis Navarro, and I guarantee you he's going to keep it on the ground until until he gets put in a situation where they have to pass. So far, the running attack productive for the Wolverines. Aaron Ramirez, a linebacker, also getting in on that tackle there we saw in the replay. First down for PSJ Memorial. This drive started back at their own seven yard line. They're out to the 35 right now. Here's Trevino, uh, crosses up to near the 40. It'll be second down in about six. So he's brought down by a host of defenders, including uh, 55 or 59 Dakota Morales. The defensive lineman. Also number eight, Manny Asensio got in there on that tackle. And anytime you get five yards on the first play, that puts you in a good situation. Probably another running down. Yeah, that is important because if you get into a third and long where you have to throw and then in this rain, something you may not want to do. Both teams kind of hoping the rain dies down, which it seems to have a little bit. There's the first pass of the evening, and this is complete. And that's caught there by number 81, Isaac Cantu, brought down by the linebacker, Aaron Ramirez. Cantu getting his first catch, and that's 
going to be just short of a first down up near the 45 yard line. I think they are giving him a first down right there in a forward penetration. So that gives the uh, Wolverines another first down, first and 10 at their own 40 yard line. Yeah, they give him 45. credit for, for five yards there, so he did pick up the first down. Eight and a half to go here in the first quarter. Hand off to Ravino, up across midfield into row territory now. He's close to another first down at about the 40, row 47 yard line. It'll be second and two. And here early on, the first minutes of the first quarter, the Wolverine offensive line are winning the battle in the trenches. No doubt about that. They're, they're actually driving the defensive lineman for the Warriors back on each play. Well, they have a couple of uh, real talented offensive linemen, uh, seniors Orlando Nito and Noe Alonso, who are highly touted back in the preseason. Here's another sweep by Trevino. He's hit, fumbles the ball. It's loose, and the Nikki Rowe Warriors come up with it. Warriors come up with the ball all the way at their 26-yard line and recovered there by number four, Alan Morales, the defensive back. And we'll go back to the replay, and you'll see Trevino ball takes a shot ball that ball knocks the ball loose, Warriors. and then Morales pounces on it. This play looked pretty promising. Nice blocking up real, but right there, a nice hit right off the ball mark. Almost any time you hit right on the ball, you're going to have a fumble. A good job by Alan Morales as he came up with a fumble recovery. That looked like a 25 Eloy Rios who jarred the ball loose, put that helmet in there and got that ball out of there. And if this was basketball, he'd get an assist for that. <laughs> And we'll so find out right away what Coach Ray is. Coach Ray is not going to change. He's going to be throwing the ball. You can guarantee that the weather conditions is not going to change his approach. And so Nikki Rowe, first and 10th, their own 28-yard line. They'll hand the ball off and get up close to about the 30-yard line. You know, you know who the ball carry was. It looks like it was uh, Eno Rios who's drawing his first start. It'll be second down and eight. And here are the offensive lineup for Nicky Rowe. Hector Basquez, just a junior, but he, uh, like uh, his counterpart Gonzalez, uh, he, he played quite a bit last year, so he's got a lot of experience. Eno Rios, uh, good speed there in the backfield, and, of course, some talented receivers there and an experienced crew up front on the line. Second down and two now for Nicky Rowe. You can see they're going to go in a spread formation the entire game. They go to three receivers to the right. One man goes in motion, that's Rios. Vasquez wants to throw, but nowhere to throw it to, and now he's going to have to take the sack. Brought down by the linebacker, Mario Silva, and a coverage sack there for the Wolverines. Good job by the linebackers and the defensive backs for the Wolverines. Vasquez had some time to throw and just couldn't find anybody open. It was going to be a short pass. He looked around, couldn't find anybody. And and here we are in third down and nine now for Rowe. Vasquez is going to roll out to his left. Now wants to keep it, but he's hit right about the line of scrimmage, and he'll go down. Actually loses yards back to the 27. So it'll be fourth Bye. down Bye. and Bye. 10, Bye. and they will have to punt it. So here's the defense there that had a pretty good showing there on that three and out. You can see they go with three down linemen and then four linebackers. Uh, this team and then they're led by the uh, safety number six Kevin Spears he was all district last year as a linebacker and he's kind of a hybrid player he can play both linebacker and a strong safety position so you'll probably hear Spears' name a lot here tonight five defensive starters back for PSJ Memorial this year Nikki Rose going to punt and the punt is up and away and off to the right and it's gonna PSJ Memorial is gonna stay away from it and Rowe will kill it at the Wolverine, 45-yard line. Gavin Play killed off by uh, number 21, Gavin Hernandez for Nicky Rowe. Wolverine, 45 We're going to have to see if there's any defensive adjustments by defensive coordinator Michael Orive because pretty much the Wolverines had their way in their first possession. If it was not for a fumble, they were on the way. 6.06 to play here in the first quarter. No score. Wolverines hand off Trevino. Nowhere to run. Tries to turn it outside. He's got nowhere to go. He's going to be tackled by several Warriors, including 55, Ernest Martinez. And Taylor Cloud. Yeah, Taylor Cloud, the linebacker, getting in there, too. Uh, you remember the last game against the Yellow Jackets? He had a lot of calls. Lost two yards on the play, so we take a look at that replay. That was some kind of stunt that was called there by... Coach Uribe. 
So second down and 12 for the Wolverines on the right hash mark. They're moving from right to left. Gonzalez wants to throw. A short pass is complete to number one. John Anthony Sines uh, forced out of bounds after a good gainer into row territory. And he's out at about the 48-yard line. I was talking to Coach Gus Cavazos prior to the game, and he was raving about this young man, Michael Gonzalez. And you can take a look at this replay. You can tell he's got that real good gun. Baseball players usually that play baseball probably always have good arms, and you can tell that ball got there in a hurry. So he's got a fast ball for a passing arm. Third down and seven for PSJA Memorial. Two receivers right. They hand off straight up the middle to Trevino. He's hit, but Fink keeps turning his legs and picks up the first down. He was hit short of the first down, but on second effort, picks it up and gets all the way to the Nicky Row 41-yard line. A pickup of seven on the play, and they'll move the chains. And pretty much give that first down to Jonathan Trevino's effort. A senior did a good job of getting hit prior to the, getting to the first down as we take a look at the replay but he refused to go down. He actually broke two tackles, three tackles, and finally they brought him down. And Taylor Clow had a hold of him, but it uh, took three more Warriors to come in there and finally bring him down. First and 10, Wolverines, the row 41. Gonzalez wants to throw, being rushed, gets off the pass, and it's incomplete. Looks like it was intended for Jay Bocanegra, who was running a crossing route over the middle about uh, seven yards downfield. That's his first incompletion. You can tell Michael Gonzalez quarterback is a good athlete, Mark. This is the second time he, the snap wasn't that good, and he did a good job of using his baseball skills to come up with the ball. Second down and 10. There you can see Boca Negra there. He's going to line up wide on the uh, near side. And now there's a handoff. I mean, off tackle to the left. Trevino breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle at the 30. Cuts inside. Now the 25 down to the, about the 24-yard line before Clow brings him down. But another big first down there for the big running back and the Wolverines. And the Wolverines are exploiting the left side, having a lot of success on the left side so far in this game. It's about the seventh time they're on on this side, and they're gaining positive yards every time. An 18-yard pickup. Zeke Trevino, uh, an offensive lineman with a pretty, pretty good block there on that play, too. Four first downs in this quarter for PSJ Memorial. A sweep to the right, that's Boca Negra. Uh, gets around to about the 22-yard line. A late flag comes in. A gain of just one on the play. And we'll see what this flag is. Usually, in that area, it usually indicates a hold. Officials talking things over. 3.45 to go in the first quarter. No score. And it was against uh, PSJA Memorial. Looked like a uh, chop block. And we'll see if this will hurt the Wolverines. As we know, the first possession was hurt by a fumble. And now a penalty that gives them, moves them back and puts them... All the way back to the 36. So that's going to be a second, second and down 25. and a bunch. Yeah. Second and 25 with 337 to go here in the first quarter. So Gonzalez out of the gun. Has plenty of time. Throws over the middle and it's caught. That's Boca Negra inside the 20 up to about the 17-yard line. Nice, uh, yep, nice pitch and catch there. It was. And that's what you expect from the Wolverines as I was taking a look at film. They like, they're a vertical passing team. They like to pass... You know, passes more than 10 yards, they have no problem. Of course, when you have a quarterback with a good arm, why not go downfield? In contrast, the Warriors like to throw short passes, short five-yard passes all over the field. And both type of uh, approaches are successful. It's third down and about three. And handoff up the middle, and Trevino is hit in the backfield. And it's going to be stuffed for a loss back to the 19-yard line. Loss of three on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Several players on the end doing a good job for the Warriors on that one. That's kind of like the defensive line control that one. And it uh, looks like it's actually third down because of the penalty. It stayed first down again, and now we have a flag down. But 
think we're going to have a defensive penalty, if I'm not mistaken here, Mark, and that's going to give him a first down. Offside against Nicky Rowe. So that'll be an automatic first down because it was third and four. You see on the replay there, you can see a couple of Warriors moving. And it's because they made contact, it's actually technically an encroachment, and that's why they blew the play dead. First down here for the Wolverines inside uh, the 12-yard line as a quarterback wants to keep it. That's Gonzalez running up to about the six, spins around and still going at the four before he's finally wrestled down by a couple of defenders. For Nicky Rowe, it looks like uh, 59 Dakota Morales finally pulling down the big quarterback. And he's a tough one. He reminds me of, if you remember, Dante Culpepper that's right. in the NFL. He was a, a big guy who played quarterback. And that's one thing. As uh, I was talking to Coach Cavazos before the game, I, he pointed out, that's my quarterback. I thought, boy, he kind of looks like a running back type of fullback, tight end kind of body but he said he's very deceptive he's got good speed and he showed a little speed there but he also showed his toughness you're not going to get him by a t-shirt tackle and there he hands off on a draw play this is uh, Trevino fighting his way up close to the three maybe the two they blow that play dead and there on the tackle was uh, Aaron Ramirez for the Warriors and boy they got some tough runners here he on this sure is. Team. if you take a look at the replay Jonathan Trevino this is the second time that the Roe Warrior defense had problems bringing him down. So on a third and one mark. Okay, here they go. Third down and one. And there's hit Trevino hit in the backfield, but surges his way into the end zone. It's a touchdown for the Wolverines. And here you see the Wolverine fans there. And boy, about 30 minutes ago, it was almost empty on that side, but the Reigns have let up. And I've got quite a few fans there on both sides of the field. And Wolverines have struck first here in the first quarter. 50 seconds left. And PSJA Memorial leads it by a score of 6 to nothing. And with this running attack, Mark, I don't know. It looked like the Wolverines were on the field for this first quarter at least 9, 10 minutes out of the whole entire quarter. And they've had two, two possessions in this quarter. Here's the extra point attempt. It's up. And it is good. The kick successful by Jonathan Soto. And our score is PSJA Memorial 7. Nikki Rowe, nothing. 50 seconds left here in the first quarter here at McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium. Let's take another look at the replay. And you're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. Students in McAllen ISD are taking courses that prepare them for careers. In fact, the class of 2014 earned 1,300 professional licenses and certifications. We offer students 16 different choices through our Career Technical Education Program, all free. Well, that scoring drive for PSJA Memorial, 55 yards in 10 plays. Impressive drive. So the Wolverines now lead it by a score of 7 to nothing. Here you see the touchdown run by Trevino from three yards out. Got hit right at the line of scrimmage, but on second effort, was able to surge into the end zone for the early lead. You can see there, PSJ Memorial competes in District 31 6A. Nikki Rowe in District 30 6A. Both teams will have one more non-district game after this one before they open up district play. So each team will have six district games. And there you see back there to receive is uh, number 20, Jose Chavez. And we get a bouncer. They go picked up by Chavez at the 20-yard line. Now to the 30, up the left sideline, up to the 40. And now brought down at about the 45-yard line. Excellent return there for the senior running back. And John Anthony signs on the tackle. Something about the Wolverines, Mark, that you might not know is that in 6A, they have the lowest enrollment of all 6A schools in the state. In the they, state? Yeah. They, and they could have switched with, uh, with, I think, Edinburgh Vela. If they would have swapped out, with it, they could have ended up being that Vela has the highest attendance in the state and they're in the 5A. So a difference of five or six kids makes a difference on what, if you're a 6A team or a 5A team. Well, yeah, 6A brand new this year after 34 years as 5A being the top classification in Texas high school football. Now they have a 6A. By the way, Nicky Rose quarterback uh, Hector Bosquez keeps it on first down but loses a yard back to the 45. Or excuse me, Chavez, he handed it off to. 
the junior running back, and Chavez wrestled down after, after, after loss, loss of one. one, 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 one. Nikki Rose ground yet to get down. on track tonight. They are at minus two rushing. 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. In the gun is Vasquez. Going to throw this, his first pass, and it's incomplete. Intended for Joseph Moreno. Moreno, a sophomore receiver, drawing his first start. And that will bring up third down and 11. And I can't say that maybe that ball was dropped because of the ball is wet, Mark, but uh, it's, it looks like the balls are being dried very well and it's not raining. Mm -hmm. But he made a mistake that a lot of receivers make is trying to run before catching the ball. There's Boscus on third and 11, has time. Now this throw is complete at the 50 and up to about the 40-yard line. Looks like it's going to be a first down as they are into Wolverine territory and a nice catch and run there by Corey Buttles, the senior receiver. And Buttles just simply ran a, uh, kind of made like he was going to go deep and got the defender to uh, bite on the deep and then came back and had a nice little hook route and was able to turn it into a first down. And a very important first down for the Warriors. And a nice pass by Boskis. I think there was a penalty, though. Oops. The Warriors are hurting themselves. That was a nice play for them to finally get a first down and keep momentum on their side and keep themselves on the field. But now with that penalty, it's going to make it about a third and looks like at least 16 yards. Yeah, that hurt Nicky Rowe. That negated the catch and first down by Corey Buttles. And they come and uh, look like a holding penalty. And they move it all the way back to the 40-yard line in row territory. We've reached the end of the first quarter, by the way. So Nikki Rowe facing third down yet again uh, as we when we come back for the second quarter. But after one, it's PSJA Memorial 7, Nikki Rowe nothing. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. All right, welcome back here to McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium. I'm Mark May with Mario Radom. Uh, we've had some heavy rain here tonight, but it looks like it subsided a bit here as we're ready for the second quarter. Score 7-0, Wolverines. McAllen, uh, Nicky Rowe facing a third and 14. Vasquez wants to throw, is flushed out of the pocket, now hits his man at midfield. That's Adames, who runs for the first down into Wolverine territory up to about the 42-yard line. Boy, where he caught it, Mario, he did not have the first down. He was able to make that happen. Yeah, you're right on that one, Mark. you got to give him credit doing a good job of not only making sure that he cut the ball, but also making sure that he knew, Victor Adames knew where the first down mark was, and he went after it, and that's a big first down for yeah, the eight, Warriors. 18 yards on that play. That's their first uh, completion of the evening as well. I ever see Chavez go in motion. Chavez is going to take the handoff, sweep left side, cuts across the 40, down to 35, and is brought down from behind at about the Wolverine 33-yard line. It's a pickup of nine on the play. And you and I know last time they played here against the Yellow Jackets, Mark, we remember that. We were very impressed by this kid, Chavez. We also want to report that this is the first time I've seen Paul Reyes in the press box. We're going to have to ask him. Maybe he didn't want to get wet tonight, Mark. Yeah, he's the uh, second one from the right up there in the uh, Nicky Rowe coach's press box. We see the uh, quarterback, Vasquez, calls his own number this time and runs up to about the 17-yard line. So he picks up a first down. And this is and what happens, Mark, when you have a first down on a passing attack. All of a sudden, it opens up your running game. Yeah, they help each other. And here's a uh, sweep to the right side. This is Chavez trying to turn that corner. Does. There's a flag down as he's pushed out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. So ostensibly a gain of about one, but we'll see what the flag is about. 10.32 to play here in the second quarter. Wolverine seven, Warriors nothing. Both teams one and one this season. Both teams won their opener and lost last week. And it's going to be holding against Nicky Rowe, so that's going to move it back 10 yards. Now these are the kind of penalties that I don't think Coach Reyes expects on week three. Those are the kind of penalties you're working on on the first two weeks. 
but we're already here in the third week and the Warriors continue to hurt themselves with penalties. Yeah, that that's a spot foul, so that moves it all the way back to the to the 30-yard line, a 13-yard penalty in essence, because the hold took place behind the line of scrimmage. Here are the Warriors. This is uh, the quarterback, Bosquez, once again, running over to the right side. He gets it up to about the 27. Pick up a three. This will bring up second down and 17. Ten minutes to go here in the second quarter. You can see Bosquez there looking toward the sideline. That's where he gets the play signaled in from. You know, the huddle is almost dead in high school football. It was, of course, a staple of football since the beginning, but relatively few teams still use the actual huddle. Here's a throw toward the end zone. It's caught. Or no, now it's incomplete. It looked like Moreno may have had it at the five, but unable to hang on as he came down to the turf, and it falls as an incomplete pass. It would have been nice a fantastic here. catch if he would have caught it, Mark, but it looked like his... He was spinning his body, and it just never looked like he had any, never had control of the ball. Yeah, it was uh, thrown to his uh, to the outside when he was looking over his inside shoulder and then tried to make the adjustment on the fly. Not always easy to do, but uh, Moreno, good potential there. He's only a sophomore. Third down and 15 now for Nicky Rowe. They're at the Wolverine 27-yard line. Vasquez in the gun, wants to throw left side, and this is incomplete. It was a little bit too low and intended for Buttles. And it looks like so far the receivers are open. Just Vasquez uh, hasn't been put in it, or he needs to put it like he did that first game against Ed Couch, but that looked like it was a catchable ball. Just makes it hard. It looks like at that play, Coach Reyes is trying to put himself into a better situation, maybe on a fourth and four or five yards to go, but they, since they didn't catch the ball, they're still back fourth and 15. And uh, in the wet conditions, you see sometimes sometimes teams take the chances, and they'll go for it on fourth and 15. They'll try a pass to the right, and this is also going to be incomplete. Intended for Adamas. Adamas would have been about five yards short of the first down where he was going to catch the football. So Nicky Rowe will turn it over on downs, and... Uh, Wolverines will take over at the 27-yard line. 9.38 to play here in the second quarter. And here in this possession, Mark, you can expect the Wolverines to keep it on the ground. So far, they've been successful. And like most good coaches, they'll keep it on the ground until the defense stops them. There's a handoff. Up the middle, Trevino now bounces it outside, is hit at the 35, and still turning his legs up to the 40, picks up a first down, and boy, this this kid must be really strong because he's uh, had several plays like that yeah, where he's picked up yards after his first hit. He just refuses to go down. Real tough. You really have to wrap him up and get him to be off balance because uh, he seems to have great balance. There's, if we're taking a look at the replay. There, he's carrying Clow on his back. He also coming in there to help out a little bit, Eloy Rios. Well, it's a team effort to bring him down. First and 10 after a 13-yard pickup. They snap it to Gonzalez. He's going to hand off to Vino running to the right side this time. Is hit at the 40, and the Warriors do a good job stringing that out. And finally, he's brought down by the defensive back, Frank Silva. And you're right, Mark. Finally, he just doesn't like to go down. Well, he ran a long way that time, but it was all east-west, so he picks up no yards. So he ran all the way to the far sideline, and uh, Silva was there at the end, number seven, to come in and bring him down. You also see number four, uh, Morales, jump in there. And number 12 at the end, Hector. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't Hector Vasquez. So second down. And we're going to see a pass to Boca Negra. Catches a block. Now picks up the first down. Down the left sideline at the 40. Now the 30. One man with an angle. Misses. And that's going to be a touchdown. Boca Negra takes it 60 yards for a Wolverine touchdown with 8.06 to play here in the second quarter. Mark, when we take a look at the replay, it didn't even look like this play was developing the way it should. And all of a sudden, you put Bocanera out in the open field. But I think we have another penalty mark. Yeah, they're spotting the ball at the 
13 yard line. He might have gone out of bounds. Okay. It's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, I never saw a flag, and now there's a timeout called by PSJA Memorial with 8.06 to play here in the second quarter. We'll take a look at the replay. We need a replay. And um, we'll take a look at the replay, see if we can see. Mark, you see how uh, that one, the quarterback was losing the ball. Mm -hmm. Did a good job. It looked like a broken play, but probably around right here is when he maybe stepped out of bounds. There he is at the 30, and you can see a couple of Warriors have a last shot at him. And uh, Morales right there, he got a, had the last out of bounds. So they're going to say he was out of bounds back at around the 13. It still is, would have been a 58-yard touchdown there for Boca Negra. Still goes down as a 45-yard completion. Well, let's give credit to Michael Gonzalez because he was kind of juggling the ball, did a good job, used his basketball hands, his baseball hands, and got control of the ball again, kept his composure on that pass. So they're at the 13-yard line, and now we've got a quick flag there that blows the play dead. About. Still no signal. Now they, they say it's against uh, PSJA Memorial over an uh, illegal procedure. So I'll move it back to the 18. It'll still be first down. Third penalty on PSJA Memorial. They're at the Nikki Rowe 18 yard line after a 45 oh, yard yes. pass, and uh, Gonzalez trying to run left side is upended at about the 19. Nice play there. Looked like job. Luis Casadas. Luis Casadas did a good job of coming in real quickly before Gonzalez could take off. They're going to say they're going to give him credit back to the line of scrimmage, the 18-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Or excuse me, second down and second down 14 is what they have up there after a first and 15. Gonzalez throws it, caught by Boca Negra at the 10 yard line, running a down and in pattern. That'll bring up third down. And here's where the coaches start thinking of what do they call in this play, being about third and up six yards to go. Is it two down territory? It all goes back to your field goal kicker. How comfortable do you feel? Yeah, it's third down and seven. They need to reach the three-yard line. They're at the row 10. Under seven minutes to play in the second quarter. Considering how wet the ball is, you know, field goals are very dicey from any distance. Here's Gonzalez, wants to throw. He's going to do a little uh, shovel pass to Trevino, and Trevino hit and brought down at about the seven-yard line, a gain of three. Going to bring up fourth down and four. So a bit of a decision here. Do you try the field goal in these uh, conditions, or do you have confidence in your offense here on I fourth think, and four. I think because it's early and knowing Coach Cavazos, he'll take his points. I think they'll go for a field goal and it's early in the season. Later on down the road, you might as well give your, your kicker an opportunity and they are going to go for a field goal. It'll be a 25-yard year, 25 yard field goal. And we have a lefty field goal kicker. Oh, yeah, and the kicker out there is uh, Jonathan Soto. Left footer, 25 yards, left hash mark, hooks this in, and this is high enough, and it's good. So, the kick is good, and PSJA Memorial now leads it 10 to nothing. They had what appeared to be a touchdown, but the receiver ruled to a step out of bounds at the 13, and it ends up costing Memorial some points there as they settle for the field goal, and the Wolverines lead it 10 to nothing here with exactly six minutes to play in the first half. Impressive drive still, though, for PSJA Memorial started yes, at their 27-yard line. Points out of it. That's what's important, getting points at it. You know, you never know if later on in this game it starts to rain real hard and the conditions get worse. So you got to put your points up there. And that's exactly what Coach Cavasso did. And he knows uh, we were talking about it in a third down, Mark, that it also depends on your field goal kicker. And he did a good job on that one. So Wolverines take three and a half minutes off the clock, drive from their 27 to the row seven, and they end up settling for a 25-yard field goal. They now have a 10-0 lead. You can see Soto there getting ready to do the kickoff. 
And they're back to receive for Nikki Rose, 23, Eno Rios, the running back. And this kick is going to go high and deep. Going to be fielded about that seven yard line. Across the 10, the 15, now the 20 up the middle. Big hole there at the 30, puts on a burst. And now up to about the 44 yard line. Terrific play there. Nice run there by Joseph Moreno. And I think we got a late hit also to add some more yards to that fine return. Did a good job of deciding. He was coming up the middle mark and he spotted mm -hmm. an opening and he took advantage of it. About a 37 yard return there for the sophomore Moreno. And the officials talking this over and they may tack on some more yards here at the end. They've ran it all the way out to the row 44 yard line. It'll be a personal foul against PSJA Memorial. That'll be 15 yards tacked on to the end of the run. 15 yard and that's going to really help the offense for the Warriors as they showed some signs of moving the ball in the last possession. It gives them the ball on their own 41 yard line. Five minutes, 50 seconds left in the second quarter. Hand off. This is Rios. And Rios runs it across the 35, close to the 30 yard line, is close to a first down. Nice play there by the senior running back, number 23, Eno Rios. So they're up to the 31 yard line and it is enough for a first down. Here's another run up the middle. This is also a good run for Rios again up to about the 20. It looks like another first down. Two runs, two first downs there for Rios. All the way to the 19. We'll take a look at that replay. Picked up 12 yards. Rowe now up to 48 yards rushing in this game. And now Rios again up to about the 14 yard line. Has had three straight carries. Has picked up 10, 12, and now five. You know, anytime you get Rios going and you get Chavez going, Mark, it opens up your, your offensive playbook. He looks like he's kind of tired on a couple of those possessions. Yeah, three straight runs there by Rios. They're in the pistol now. And they're going to hand off Rios again. And this time he's upended right at the line of scrimmage. And a good job by Rios just to hold on to that I don't football. Know how it looked like uh, Mario uh, Chavez, I think, for the Wolverines. Actually, in Jose there. came in there and upended him. Nice hard hit. I'm surprised he didn't fumble on that one. Yeah, he, he didn't expect it. Chopped him down like a redwood. Yep. A redwood. They're going to take a timeout. I think uh, Coach Paul Reyes wants to think about this because it is a important possession for the Road Warriors. They haven't been able to put any points on the board. And we, over the years, we're used to them scoring a lot of points. And when you look at the scoreboard, it's 10 to 0. It's been pretty much the Wolverines controlling the game with their ground game. Mm -hmm. And the possession is probably more crucial in a game like this because the teams are keeping it on the ground more. The clock is going to run faster, and you're going to have fewer possessions over the course of the game and probably a lower scoring game. So, you know, a 10-point lead, you do want to start catching up in there. You don't want to fall too much further behind. And I know we've, because we've had a lot of possessions on the ground, Mark, this has been a very fast game. Here we see our weather, and it is definitely um, much calmer than it was probably uh, 30 minutes to an hour before the game started when it was just boring. Vasquez wants to throw for the end zone, and it's incomplete, but two players collided, and there's a flag down, and it looks like this will be a first down for the Warriors. There was defi definitely there was contact there while the ball was in the air. We called it from up here. There was contact by the defense. And we know that that can't happen at any level, all the way from the pros to the high schools and all the way down to Pee Wee and Pop Warner and all those leagues, boys club leagues. Now keep in mind, uh, pass interference in high school does not mean a spot foul. They're going to do this normally 15 yards, but because they're inside the 20, it becomes half the distance. And they're going to set this up at the two-yard line. First and goal. Vasquez, handoff, Rios, hit at the three, and nothing further. Initial hit by Kevin Spears, and then three or four more teammates came in there to bring Rios down. It'll be second and goal. And you can see why Spears is a 
all-district defensive player for the Wolverines. Did a good job of fending off his blocker and coming up and making a tackle. We'll see if Coach Reyes will try to go on the other side. Hey, let's take a look at those Fossil Middle School Future Warriors. They're here enjoying the game, weathering the storm. Yeah, they got the middle school football team here watching tonight from Risers in the north end zone. Fossil Middle School, which will feed into row. And here on second and goal, Bosquez, a busted play, missed the handoff, wants to keep it, and now it's going to lose yardage back to about the eight yard line. A couple of flags come in late. And boy, that play uh, went nowhere pretty fast. Uh, one of the defenders here, Wolverines, uh, Alex Campbell, got in there. And I think Mario Chavez was in there once again, their nose guard. Penalty is offsetting penalties. And that'll give Nikki Rowe the down back. So in a way, that's kind of a break that's for Rowe because they had that Rowe. busted play. Yep. And there on the replay, you can see the hold against the Warriors. And then there was also a penalty committed by Bar Memorial. We've got another timeout out there. And I think Rowe is calling this one. And that'll leave Rowe with one timeout. We'll take a quick break. It's second down and goal for Nikki Rowe. And we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Football Night at McAllen. In college credit, McAllen ISD leads the way. Plus scholarships that save time and money. More than a thousand professional licenses or certifications. Nearly 100 associate's degrees. In McAllen, students can live anywhere and enroll here. And we're back here at McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium in McAllen, Texas. Mark May with Mario Reyna here on MITV. Hope you're enjoying this production. And it's Nikki Rowe with a second and goal situation from the three-yard line. They're going to hand this off to Chavez. Big hole and a touchdown. Jose Chavez untouched three yards into the end zone. What a job by that Warrior offensive line. And Nikki Rowe is on the board. Good job by center C.J. Medina. Guards Aaron Rivera and Juan Elias pretty much made it real easy for Chavez to just basically walk in untouched. Here's the extra point try. Vicente Vargas, senior kicker, will attempt it. The holder is John Pettis. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up and away, and it's good. With three minutes, 30 seconds left before halftime, it's the Warriors now trailing by three, 10 to seven, against PSJA Memorial. So for Nikki Rowe, they go on a 56 yard drive, started at their own 44 yard line after that terrific kick return by Joseph Moreno. That was helped by a 15 yard penalty. And then Eno Rios with some terrific runs that got him into a, uh, a uh, situation where they uh, picked up a pass interference penalty that got him a first and goal situation. And on second and goal, you see the touchdown right there by Jose Chavez. A nice little chest bump there with the uh, offensive tackle, Zach Belshaw. And Zach Belshaw almost jumped higher than Chavez. Yeah, good vertical leap there. Why shouldn't he? They did a good job of the offensive line for the Warriors of that possession. And the PSJA Memorial in the traveling white uniforms, white pants, white jerseys with the green numerals and the green helmets and got the, their helmet design is similar to the University of Michigan. They've got that kind of uh, those claw-like stripes there. Be careful here, Mark. Be careful here. You never know Coach Reyes. He likes, to, he likes those gadget outside kicks. That is true. Vargas to kick it off. And he's going to kick this high and short into that dead area. Takes a Nicky Rowe bounce and the ball is loose. And there's a scramble for it at about the 37-yard line, but I think PSJ Memorial picked it up. But boy, that was dangerous. You called it, Mario. It that was, was dangerous. Something they like to do. They had an opportunity. I, I, they could have touched the ball, the Warriors. Yeah, it was a live football. And it took a Nicky Rowe bounce. And it bounced into that area between the, uh, the initial uh, line of blockers and then the uh, kind of halfbacks, the uh, middle line. And uh, Nikki Rowe almost got there first. Instead, Farm Memorial's ball at the 38-yard line. 
And here's a pass caught by Sines. Sines runs up to about the 39. Pickup of only one. And one, one of the comments I remember talking to Coach Gus Cavazos of the Wolverines earlier on in, in a pregame, he talked about if he felt that if the score was low scoring, he felt it, it was an advantage to his team. He didn't want to get into a track meet with the Warriors. He felt he might not be able to keep up. So if his words are true, he's going to probably feel good up here when they go into halftime. They go into the option, toss it left, and the ball is loose. And it looks like Nicky Rowe has come up with it. Nicky Rowe comes up with the turnover, the second of the game for them. And it looks like on the recovery there was uh, number 40, Luis Gossetis. And That's also something that Coach Cavazos talked about, Mark, that he felt that the reason they lost to the PSJ Bears is because of fumbles. If not, he really felt that they should have been coming into this game at 2-0. And it was basically a good pitch. And it almost looked like, like John Sines was looking upfield before he actually got a hold of the pitch out. So excellent field position here for the Warriors on their own 34-yard line with 2 minutes and 52 seconds in the clock. And they're down only 10-7. There they go from the 34-yard uh, line, and this is Chavez. Just scored a touchdown a moment ago. Spins his way up to the 30 for a gain of four. Both teams uh, doing performing modestly on the ground here tonight. Rowe has 60 yards on the ground, and the Wolverines 88. The Wolverines also have 91 yards through the air. Rowe only 18. You see the replay. Bosquez rolls out right on second and six. And throws it incomplete, intended for Adamas, who was running an out pattern over on the far sideline. So bring up third down and six now. The Warriors have not done well on third down in this game. They're two for four. Oh, well, it's third and six. I've been looking at a two down territory here where Coach uh, Reyes is probably thinking of how can we use the next two downs to get a first down. I don't see him punting or trying a field goal from this area of the game. Vasquez wants to throw, looks left, throws right, it's caught, but they're going to lose yardage back to about the 33. And that was Moreno with the catch, but they lost some yards. And it'll bring up fourth down. The Wolverines defense is doing a good job of not giving up the big yards after the catch. And that's, that's a role warrior offense. You try to get short passes and see if they can break away, but so far the Wolverines are not allowing it. Fourth and eight, but the Warriors will go for it. They're going to throw to the right side. It's caught, but it's going to be just short of the first down. Adamas was over there. It was a low pass, so he had to go down to a knee to make the catch. And, of course, once your knee touches, you're automatically down. He was not able to lunge for the first down, so Warriors will come up a yard short on fourth down. And, unfortunately for the Warriors, they did not take advantage of the fumble. And that's the mark of a good team is what do you do after you get a turnover? The Warriors were not able to take advantage. Of As we saw the replay mark, you're absolutely right. He focused on catching the ball, and when that happened, his knee went down. So they're at the 26-yard line with a minute 40 to go. Wolverines hand it to Trevino, running left side, and is close to the first down near the sideline. But I think the clock will continue to run, brought down by... Of the Warriors, so several Warriors over there, but including number 10, Alex Juarez. And second down and one, so the clock will continue to roll. I mean, this would be a good passing down with only second and one, and this will show you what the Wolverines are thinking of either running out the clock or trying to go for a score. Here they added Trevino, first down and more at the 40. He tries to go outside, is brought down by a shoestring tackle at the Wolverine 44 yard line. And so that'll stop the clock momentarily while they move the chains. A good tackle there in the open field by Jose Barrera. Kind of a draw play there to Trevino. Nine yard pickup. And the Wolverines are now over 100 yards on the ground here tonight. 54 seconds left in the second quarter. Gonzalez wants to throw, has time. Left side, it's overthrown. May have been throwing that one away. It looks like it was intended for number 81, Isaac Cantu. We'll take a look here with a second down, with 48 seconds to go, whether the Wolverines are happy to go into halftime with a 10-7 score or are they going to try 
to pass the ball, but knowing Coach Cavazos, he's been a pretty conservative coach in the past. I, I'm looking for a handoff here. Second and 10, Wolverines with two timeouts. Their own 44. Gonzalez wants to throw, throws it. He's hit as he throws, it's intercepted. And the Warriors have it right back. Picked off by the defensive lineman, Manny Asensio. And boy, defensive lineman, he's happy about that. They don't get that kind of uh, opportunity very often. But we'll see on this replay that Gonzalez is back to throw. He pumped it and then got hit as he threw, which took all the air out of the ball. And it died right into the hands of Asensio, who just sprints to the sideline. He's really, that made his night. Here's the replay. A good rush by the Warrior defense. But Mark, I just called it. I told Coach Cavazos that I thought he was going to be conservative and run with the ball. And Yes, I'm going to have a talk with him. That's the third turnover of the game, and pretty much that's what's helping the, the Warriors. Musk is to throw it on first down. This is caught at the 40 and fights his way up to the 38-yard line. First catch of the evening for Kobe Ariaga, junior receiver. And here's for your timeouts are golden. The Warriors with two timeouts left. Yeah, they have two timeouts. Don't elect to use any, though. Second down and seven. Bach at 18 seconds and rolling. Boscus rolling to his right. Throws it toward the sideline. It's incomplete. Intended for Adames. That'll bring up third and seven. Clock stops with 13 seconds to go before halftime. Warriors way out of field goal range right now. They're still at the 38-yard line. And, Mark, anytime you're up 10 to seven at halftime and you have three turnovers... I'm pretty sure Coach Cavazos is not happy about the turnovers, but he's going to be real happy that he might be going into halftime with a 10-7 lead. Hey. Now they blow the whistle did not dead, and I think uh, Rowe had called timeout there just before, just before they snapped the ball, so 12 seconds left. I don't know if they'll put a second back on because it was stopped before with 13 seconds. But Nikki Rowe Ro Ro Warriors take a timeout. They've got one timeout to go. So we'll take a quick break. You're watching Football Night at McAllen right here on MITV. Athletics. Students achieving goals they never thought possible. And along the way, learning skills not always taught in the classroom. McAllen ISD offers 13 sports for boys and girls. Find out more, 618-6089. On Veterans Memorial Stadium, 12 seconds left before halftime. It's the Wolverines 10, the Warriors 7. Warriors have the ball, facing third down. They're just two for five on third down in this game. And they're gonna go with a spread formation. They're at the Wolverine 38 yard line. They're gonna, they're gonna flare this out to the right side. And this is going to be a quarterback eligible. Throw it back to the left. Intended for Vasquez. Caught at the 35-yard line and up to about the 28-yard line. Gets out of bounds with two seconds left. Now one second left. Clock stopped with one second, and the Warriors bought themselves one more play. So uh, Paul Reyes pulling a rabbit out of the hat there. It looked like a lot of fun, but it didn't get a lot of yards. I don't understand what happened there, Mark, if the... Did they have one more timeout left? Maybe they did. If not, they will, I don't see why the Warriors didn't take a timeout. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there either. The the Warriors not using their last timeout and that last second ticked off, so they don't get a play. But uh, we see the replay once again. It was a quarterback eligible. The quarterback was in the shotgun, uh, threw a lateral to his right side. And then the uh, ball was thrown back all the way across the field to Vasquez. And they're kind of hoping that the defense would all flood to the left and leave Vasquez smooth sailing back on the right. Uh, but the Wolverines were there to hold him to a nine-yard gain. Uh, but the last second ticked off, and we are at halftime. So it's PSJA Memorial 10, Nikki Rose 7. We're at the break. Stay tuned for an exciting second half. Coming your way, you're watching Football Night at McAllen right here on MITV. A child growing up to become successful. It's every parent's dream. For some, the dream includes becoming a doctor. Through McAllen ISD, such a track is possible. It's the Medical Science Academy. This program is for high school students who are interested in pursuing health care as a career. Courses are taken at South Texas College during the last two years of high school. 
They graduate from high school with an associate's degree in hand, and it's all free. At McAllen ISD, if you want to be a doctor, you choose your course of study.